study circle, the extramural lectures team, the Center for Innovation and Indo-German Center for Sustainability, I extend a hearty welcome to the children, the faculty and students to this lecture by one of the greatest visionaries of this era and inspiring leader, Bharat Ratna, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. is a ray of hope which guides us towards the light of success. We shall begin to raise function by invoking the blessings of Lord Almighty. Let us all rise for the prayer song. Astoma Sadgamaya Tamsoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashit Dukha Bhagavet Om Shanti 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 As a token of our love and affection May I request the head boy and head girl of Vanavani School, M. Sridhar Babu and N. Kasturi, to present a bouquet to Dr. Abdul Kalam. May I now request Dr. Abdul Kalam to offer floral tribute to Swami Vivekananda. I now call upon Mr. Raghavan of the Extramural Lectures team to introduce Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam to the gathering. A renowned scientist and engineer, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam served as 11th President of India from 2002 to 2007. Being a man of vision who is always full of ideas aimed at the development of the country, he has inspired people across generations and was popularly called the People's President. <laughs> Dr. Kalam played a pivotal organization and technical role. Dr. Kalam played a pivotal organizational and technical role in India's Pokhran nuclear test in 1998. He is the Chancellor of Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, Tiruvanantapuram. A professor, of, a professor at Anna University, Chennai, and an adjunct faculty at many other academic institutions. Dr. Kalam's contribution to public service, apart from being an eminent scientist, a gifted engineer, a visionary, and a humanitarian, has seen him being bestowed with numerous honors and awards. He became the first Asian to be honored with the Hoover Medal, America's top engineering prize. He was awarded Padma Bhushan and Padma Vibhushan before being honored with our country's highest civilian award, Bharat Ratna, in 1997. <laughs> for his work in his own DRDO and his role as a scientific advisor to the Indian government. Well known for his inspirational and visionary ideas, Dr. Kalam's famous books like Wings of Fire, Ignited Minds and India 2020 have inspired millions. Words alone are not enough to express Dr. Kalam's charisma. Hence, I conclude this introduction here and request Dr. Kalam to begin the today's lecture on creativity and youth power. Thank you.
friends good evening to all of you uh, first of all i would like to say that i am very sorry uh, that i got uh, delayed uh, because i got to be a big young crowd i could not come out of it okay uh, two student group so i am sorry for it so we will compensate some way uh, first i would like to greet professor anand Uh, members of the faculty and dear students to every one of you my greetings on this great day of uh, of a beautiful day of thinking about uh, swami vekananda i am very happy to see young people i am delighted to be here at the indian institute of technology madras and address the members of this renowned place of learning and other guests present here my greeting to you my friends Uh, before i start i would like to say this iit madras is very close to my heart and many ways because my professor uh, who taught me a uh, design of uh, aircraft uh, he he became the director of this uh, iit madras uh, professor pandale and he was my guru uh this is a fantastic guru because he used to take class 7:30 to 10:30 in madras institute of technology 7:30 to 10:30 hours class have you come across the 3 hours class have you have you <laughs> so he used to take every alternate day used to take 3 hours class friends before i begin my address i would like to share a thought with all the youth present here uh i have uh, met so far Uh, 11 million youth present 11 million youth like you in a decade's time uh, from various parts of the country i have met and uh, what i love the in india and abroad i have seen their hopes and experienced their pains walked with their aspirations and heard through their and their despair also all this experience made me to learn something about them which i would like to share with you shall i yes, i learned carefully hear me what i'm saying i learned what did i learn from the youth of 11 million people i learned every youth wants to be unique every youth wants to be unique that is you every youth wants to be unique that is you but the world around uh, around you is doing its best day and night to make you just everybody else now now the question is whether you want to be you or everybody else you you want to be you yes. not everybody else now if the cost be like everybody else is convenient at the first glance but not satisfying in the long vision the challenge therefore my young friends is that you have to fight the hardest battle you have to fight the hardest battle which any human being can ever imagine to fight and never stop fighting until you arrive at your destined place that is the unique you to get to, to get the unique you is a big battle the battle means you don't need to take a gun the battle means you have to have four unique things four unique tools you must have in that battle uh, one is you have to set the goal the second one is acquire the knowledge continuously and third one it's a hard work with the devotion and fourth is perseverance these are the tools you have to as a for the battle the you have to wage for that if you have these four tools definitely you will become a unique you my best wishes to all of you now being unique will require also excellence uh, let us understand what is the excellence in more detail you know excellence is a, excellence is self imposed a self directed life long process excellence is not by accident it's a process where an individual organization or nation continuously strives to better oneself 
the performance standards are set by themselves. They work on their dreams with focus and are prepared to take the calculated risk and do not get deterred by failures as they move towards their dreams. Then they step up their dreams as they tend to reach the original targets. They strive to work to their potential. In the process, they increase their performance thereby multiplying further their potential and this is an unending life cycle phenomenon. Uh, they are not in competition with anyone else but, but themselves and that is the culture of excellence. Let me share an important experience from the life of the father of the nation, life of the father of the nation. To learn and, and uh, through 79 years of now, I am in the 80th orbit around the sun. You know what it means, 80th orbit around the sun. <laughs> that uh, uh, through 79 years of my life, I have been a part of pre-independent India, jubilation of independence, and the post-independence era. Let me recall one incident which took place on the eve of Indian independence at the time I was the high school boy. At the stroke of midnight of 1415 August 1947, the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, was declaring the independence to 300 million Indians from foreign rule at that time, 300. There was a rejoicing all around the country. At that time, there was a sudden question from Stray Corner. Where is the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi? He was not there for flag hoisting. For the that too, independent flag, father of the nation was not there. To the surprise of the entire audience, Mahatma Gandhi was in, Cal in, in Bengal, West Bengal, wiping the tears of those who were affected due to the social disharmony. Mahatma Gandhi's diary records his advice to a group of students who came to meet him in Calcutta on that day. The advice goes, quote, students, students ought to think and think well. They should do not wrong. Students should do everything to build up a new state of India, which would be everybody else's pride. This is what Father of the Nation wanted from all of you. These actions of the champion of nonviolence at the time of independence made me feel proud by being led an inspirational leader. When there's a jubilation in Red Fort, he was the leader who was where the pain was. Friends, while in the company of many young inspired students of IIT Madras, I would like to, I, I have given you that the evolution, the evolution of a unique you. I would like to give my perspective on the topic, the evolution of unique you. Friends, let me talk about what type of world in the present century you will witness, that is 21st century. Let us jointly work out with the interaction. You know, the world in the 21st century will be a knowledge-based society with multiple opportunities. I was studying a book the name of the book was Empires of the Mind. It will be in your library. Empires of the Mind by Dennis Waitley. This book uh, gives what type of new world which we are facing now. What was yesterday and what is today. I have, no, I have modified certain points of the author to suit our conditions today's talk. I have also added a third line which is pertinent to the action required by the management institutions and technical institutions. It specially says that what worked yesterday won't work today. What worked yesterday won't work today. Now it goes like that. There are ten points. First one, yesterday natural resources define power. As you know today it is not important, natural resources, but knowledge is power. Today's knowledge is power. Institution will be the powerhouse for knowledge. Like IIT may be a powerhouse for the knowledge. Second one, yesterday hierarchy was the model. Today, today, synergy is the mandate. 
institution will be enabler of intersection of the multiple faculties towards mission goals. Yesterday, third point, yesterday leaders commanded and controlled. They were commanders. Leaders were commanders, technical or administrative or managerial or, uh, or industrial. Yesterday leaders commanded and controlled. Today leaders empower and coach. They become coach and they empower. That means potential leaders will be empowered through exposure of the needs of the sustainable development. That, that will be their tool. Fourth point, yesterday shareholders came first. Today, customers come first. That means education to inculcate sensitivity to the user needs. Yesterday, employees took order. Uh, today, teams make decision. Institution can inject the team spirit. Yesterday, seniority signifies status. Everything about seniority. Today, creativity drives status. Creativity, whoever creative, he takes over the organization and the nation. Creativity drives the status. Institution is the breeding environment for creativity. Yesterday, production determined the availability. Today, competitiveness is the key. Competitiveness powered by research and the university or like IIT has to have the motto of teaching, research, teaching. Teaching, research, teaching. Best teaching comes out of a best research. Best research comes out of best teaching. Now yesterday, value was extra. Today, value is everything. Value-based education has to be introduced as a part of the curriculum at least for one hour every week, even technical institutions. Yesterday, everyone was a competitor. Today, everyone is a customer. And yesterday, uh, during education, industrial and entrepreneurship training is essential. Last point, yesterday, profits were earned through expediency. Today, work with integrity and succeeded with integrity. Now, friends, will you repeat it me what I'm saying? Will you repeat? Yes? I will. I will work with integrity and succeed with integrity. Tough problem, is it not? Is it not? Are you do it? You will do it? All of you will do it? Then you have to do a job for me. Okay. Today, I will give you one full day. My email is apj at the rate of abdulkalam.com. Okay? apj at the rate of, you know, my email. Otherwise, you go to my website, www.abdulkalam.com. Now, you are going to give me uh, five areas. People, according to you, what person, you living person, uh, who has worked with integrity, who is working with integrity and succeeding with integrity. First one, political leader, number one, okay? You have to locate a political leader. Number two, number two, a industrial chief public sector or private sector who, has, who is working, uh, working with integrity and succeeding with integrity. Third person, a bureaucrat. The who has, according to you, the bureaucrat of the nation, he has worked with integrity and succeeded with integrity. The fourth person is a social scientist and so, social, uh, that is societal uh, change, change maker. And if you can identify one person, you can write these five guys, okay? Okay? Will you do it? How many of you will do it? All of you will do it? You won't. Otherwise, I'll catch you if you don't do that. Now, friends, I want to share with you how important one experience, because it happened in the same city long, long ago. You were not even idea form. At that time, it happened. I want to share with you. It's like this, 1954-57, I was studying in the aeronautical engineering at Madras Institute of Technology, Kuropat. In the third year, I met to a professor, Professor Srinivasan. He's a, he's a, he is a Caltech man, aeronautical engineer, and he took classes for us. And uh, the first day itself, we were nine students, uh, different to areas like propulsion, aerodynamic structure, control and guidance, material, uh, all areas. 
uh, instrumentation. So he gave us a project, six months project. The project was a preliminary design of a low-level attack aircraft. We have to do it six months' time. They, all the nine of us jointly work because the aircraft, you know, everything is there. So low-level attack aircraft you have to design. So we started designing. At those days, we didn't, you guys are now blessed with the computer. We did have computer. We used slide rules. And uh, then a drawing board. We since tried to, this computer was not there. We used the drawing board and slide rule, our tools, apart from the library. So we were working hard, but we were not in a position to assemble all the database uh, so that we can realize a yeah, yeah, design in the drawing board and also yeah, a document of a design document. Fifth month came in, we were struggling, we were working hard, of course. And one day, my teacher, Professor Srinivasan, Sunday, he was going for a tennis morning. He entered into my lab and saw, and all of us uh, trying to do something. But he saw, and he saw me, he said, Kalam, uh, you are a hopeless uh, status now. Uh, I, I am not happy with your performance of uh, a preliminary design of a low-level attack across your team. He said, you are the leader, uh, you are not done a good job. Your scholarship will be terminated if you don't do it uh, in a one month's time. So he gave one month's time. So he gave a very bad certificate on that day. He's a tough professor. I hope you don't have such tough professors. Uh, so, <laughs> so he have, uh, we worked hard, of course, our fellow Sai, it's my job to bring all of them together. And we did, uh, we did our best. And uh, yeah, shape, uh, some shape, we took the design, low level attack aircraft, some calculation we did, some report we prepared. Third week, fourth week, we are almost, we are uh, ready uh, stage. Then again, my professor landed in our laboratory and saw he was very happy. And uh, you guys, I gave a tough, uh, a target you have done, and he took us to his home, he gave a Madras coffee, and uh, certificate, he gave us a good job, you guys have done. But what is important here is, it's not uh, uh, that project, what we are doing, the number of people doing. Important is, what I learned on that day, our team learned was, how to do a system design, how to do a system integration, how to do a system management. You know, when you are studying in the, in, the, in, the, like, in, the, in the class and you are getting ready for your degree, you are doing, you are becoming a system designer and system integrator, system manager. This experience tomorrow when you go out of IIT Madras, wherever you go, they will not ask which branch you belong to. They will ask, can you make a product? That product will have multi-technologies. When I, in 1957, when I finished my course, when I went a job, I was appointed in those days senior scientific assistant and uh, at the Ministry of Defense. The first job Dr. Nilakantan gave me was, you design a dot, a supersonic target aircraft and, and, uh, and a hovercraft. When I went to ISRO, uh, after say four years, first job they, they didn't ask me whether you are not it follow, what follow you are. They asked me, you design a payload uh, for the scientist to fly in the sounding rocket and design a sounding rocket. So friends, you should uh, remember that market for you, when you go out on this campus, you must always think in terms of a system design, system integration, and uh, system management. Faculty also, I would like to request, see that your job projects comes out between the number of students per number of faculties. They join together. They do, probably you are all doing that. So friends, I hope you all have undergone such an environment of integrated learning process, particularly when you are entering into the knowledge society with the competitiveness as a key now, now I'll be presenting what type of knowledge society the nation will be progressing by the year 2020. Another 10 years time, uh, you, you would be working for uh, a, a nation, uh, either you would have become a, by the 2020 developed nation 
or some of you may be working for it. Now I would like to give you 2020 how the India another 10 years time should look like. Number one, uh, number one, a nation where the rural and urban divide has reduced to a thin line. Uh, here, did your communication people work, uh, electronics people work, and also my system managers have to work. A nation where there is an equitable distribution and adequate access to energy and quality water. Energy, it will be a, um, energy independence. That is, you go away from the fossil fuel. And a nation where agriculture, industry and service sector work together in symphony. A nation where education with value system is not denied to any meritorious candidate because of societal or economic discrimination. A nation which is the best destination for the most talented scholars, as scientists and investors. A nation where the best of health care is available to all. A nation where the governance is responsive, transparent and corruption free. A nation where poverty has been totally eradicated, illiteracy removed, and crimes against women and children are absent, none in the society feels alienated. A nation that's prosperous, healthy, secure, devoid of terrorism, peaceful and happy, and continues with a sustainable growth path. A nation that is one of the best places to live in and proud of its leadership. Now, question is, how to achieve it. To achieve the distinct profile of India, we have the mission of transform India developed nation. We have identified five areas where India has a core competence for integrated action. One is agriculture and food processing, education and healthcare, information communication technology, a reliable and quality electric power, surface transport and infrastructure, self-reliant critical technologies and leading to 10% GDP growth for next one decade. Now, these five areas are closely interrelated and leading to, leading to the economic, economic security and national security. And dear friends, when I see the engineers in front of me, future, future technologists, researchers, I'm thinking, I'm thinking what sort of technologies that you will be working with me, with us, what type of technology you will be working with us in the future towards national development. Let me now talk on the convergence of technology. You, since you have talked about technologies, you have said it now, but when you go out of this campus, and now you are going to have what is called convergence of technologies, and even colleges will start teaching. The inf as you know, the information technology and communication technology have already converged leading to information and communication technology, ICT. Now, information technology combined with biotechnology has led to the bioinformatics, as you know. Now, this nanotechnology has come in. It is the field of the future that will replace micro, according to me, that will replace the microelectronics and many fields with the tremendous application potential in the areas of medicine, electronics and material science. When nanotechnology and ICT uh, integrated, silicon electronics, photonics are born and it can be said that material convergence will thus will happen. With material convergence and biotechnology linked a new science called intelligent bioscience will be born, which would lead to a disease-free, happy and more intelligent human habitat with the languity and high human capacities. Convergence of bio-nano information technologies can lead to the development of nanorobots. Nanorobots, when they are injected into a patient, my expert friends say, it will diagnose and deliver the treatment exclusively in the affected area, and then the nanorobot gets digested as it is of DNA-based products. I saw the product sample in one of the star laboratories in South Korea, where best minds with multiple technology work with the target of finding out a out-of-box solution. Now, friends, now recently, a new trend is emerging. The aspect being introduced is that of ecology. Globally, the demand is shifting 
towards the development of a sustainable system which are technologically superior. This is the new dimension of the 21st century knowledge society. Thus the new age model would be not three dimensional, it would be four dimensional, that is bio, nano, info, eco based. Bio, nano, info, eco based. Uh, take example a GM crop, a GM genetically modified crops. I was reading in an article by Dick Taverin titled Freedom of Research and Eco Fundamentalism. Yesterday only I read that the notion that the notion that GM crops will benefit only top corporate is mistaken, according to the author. He says that most of the development of GM is taking place in the lesser developed regions of the world. Moreover, not only uh, not will be the word, not only carefully researched GM crops benefit the impoverished, imp, imp, would also improve the environment as they reduce the need to use pesticide, thereby avoiding water pollution. Similarly, some of the GM crops brought the idea of no-till, which would, uh, which would preserve the topsoil. They would use less energy, both directly as well as indirectly. India is the fourth largest cultivator of the GM crops in the world and has vast experience of GM cotton. But of course, for other things, that a tremendous opposition. Some well-renowned papers show that the environmental impact of the crops in 2007 was equivalent of taking away, that is GM, the environmental impact of the GM crops in 2007 was equivalent of taking, taking 4 million cars off the road. This, uh, I, will, I will be putting this uh, uh, lecture in my website www.abdulkalam.com. You can question, you can discuss. The next generation GM crops or hybrid crops would require further thrust on the converging ecology and science, where the crops would be able to grow in a salty soil region, salty soil region, and also heal the unproductive soil. The need would be bring bio needs for fulfilling specific nutritional requirements of the human beings. Thus, the next generation will research, well researched and tested GM crop will not only lead to the second green revolution, but also herald the now needed convergence of bio, info, nano ecosystems. An example I have given. Certainly, each and every one of you align your goals towards the distinctive profile of the nation by 2020, which, which I have described as a 10 pillars, will give the challenging environment for you to contribute by innovation and entrepreneurship. Now, friends, in conclusion, I would like to say, what you will be remembered for, you are all young fellows, 20, 20, around 20, 25, what you'll be remembered for, you see, you see the top, as soon as we top the bulb, immediately we remember a guy, isn't it? Same, you see the telephone, we remember. Said you, you travel, in a, you see the blue sky and blue sea, we remember the Raman effect. So, the French history echoes to us, history echoes, hear me what I'm saying, history echoes us, echoes to us, that those who have courage to imagine the impossible, are the few unique personalities who broke all the human limitation of thought and action. In every field of human effort, whether science, technology, medicine, art, sports, industry, or even the development of politics, the names of the people who imagined the impossible are the engraved timelessly in our human history. By breaking the limits of their imagination, they transform the world. Will you be joining in that? The question is, how many of you will be joining in that gang? By breaking the limits of the imagination, they have tra transformed the world. Now, I started today's lecture with the thought of unique you. What will drive towards your own unique you? It is a, it is a mantra. What I will be remembered for? What I will be remembered for? The tool for the unique you, uh, the answer is, and you have to ask a question, what I will be remembered for? If you give a question within one page, answer, that may lead to in few years' time the unique you. 
what i be remembered for i would like to ask you what you would like to be remembered for you have to evolve yourself and shape your life you should write it on a page that page what i be remembered for write it on a page you should write it on a page that page may be a very important page in the book of human history and you will be remembered for creating that one page in the history of the nation now i'll give some examples will you be remembered i am asking young fellows will you be remembered for creating one of the top fortune 500 companies which would deal with the issues of the impoverished population of the world and improve their living standards will you be remembered for bringing affordable quality water to about 1 billion people in the world who do not have access to clean drinking water will you be remembered for becoming the pioneer in developing <coughs> in developing the smart water ways and river connectivity in connectivities will you be remembered for revitalizing or revolutionizing the integrated primary health care center and bringing preventive health care in underdeveloped region of africa and where each year 300 to 500 million cases of malaria affect human life will you be remembered for doubling the food production of the world will you be remembered as a great researcher in sustained development system of pura that be providing urban amenities in the rural area will you be remembered for bringing energy independent for different countries that is going away fossil fuel go to solar and nuclear uh, bio and wind power will you be remembered for the action oriented clean home clean environment clean state clean nation and clean world will you be a pioneer will you be will you start a pioneer movement of conserving the energy and the environment will you be remembered for developing 1 million enlightened youth for transforming the world into a peaceful world so like swami vivekananda suggested you give me 100 guys i will change the world i will be happy friends if you could write this page one page today tonight and and mail to me apj at the rate of abdulkalam.com and definitely i will start discussing i'll start discussing with you and uh, and uh, i'll correspond with you and send you some books for the study so my greeting best wish to all of you for their five, five future endeavors may god bless you may god bless you to be the unique you unique you. okay wish you all the best I have some books for IIT, IIT Madras Library. If uh, one of you come, faculty member or doctor on come, I want to hand over a book, set of books, sir. Uh, I have got a set of books to give to your library so the students can will read. Kalam has time for exactly three questions. If you put up your hand, there will be a mic that will be brought to you. Who three are questions. First, because I have a, another two programs. <laughs> Next time, exclusively I come to IIT Madras. <laughs> yes, lady. Good evening. I'm yes. Ananya. and uh, my question is somewhere related to food security because recently i vis visited my native place bhubneshwar where i saw that most of the farming areas farm lands had been converted and had to bear the concrete buildings or the concrete trees that we call nowadays so if everything continues to go on like that and all the crop lands are converted into houses what do you think that will when our country is developed would we be surviving on tablets rather than food where would food come from well <laughs> see my my feeling is eh see my i saw today one place one institution 
they call it green environment because they have used fly ash, fly ash bricks for building the uh, houses. So it is purely some of the architects who come out from here. They have to design even, even the low cost houses uh, with green uh, nature, is an, amenable to nature. Uh, I believe that uh, I have started a mission, a billion people, a billion trees. That is each one, uh, will, you take a, will you take a vote if you don't mind? I will. I will plant five trees and nurture. Will you do it really? Eh? Do it? Okay, thank you. Okay, okay next question. Good evening, sir. I'm Pete from KB. Where are you? I'm here. Ah, ah okay. Ah. So, my question is also related to food security. There are some. There are some parts of India like Punjab where food grains are being produced in excess and they are rotting in the open and there are some parts in India such as Madhya Pradesh where around 40% of the children are um, sleeping without any food in their bellies. So this, uh, this is a major problem in this nation. If food could be provided, there is be, there's enough food to be provided to these people but it is not being provided. See that by 2020, uh, today, we produce about 230 million tons of food. Out of that, 10 to 20% of the food is not properly stored. So, so big efforts has to be mounted, being mounted on storage, uh, uh, augmentation of storages. By 2020, we need nearly 380 million tons of food with lesser land from 170 million hectares, we'll have only 100 million hectares. Uh, then water will be less and the farmers will be less. That means if we have to double, nearly double the food, we have to have the technology is the only tool. Um, multi, multi cropping and the seed, the seeds, uh, high, high yield variety seeds. And also we have to go for some area, the GM crops. Okay, friends? Okay. Sir. Uh, hi. Hello, sir. Uh, my name is Shivaram. Uh, my question is, sir, uh, you asked, asked us to write a page on what would we be good for. So, sir, if I put the same question to you, like, we know that you would like to inspire people in but I still want to hear it from you. Like, if you had to write a page about what you would be good for. Now, now what I will be, eh? What I will write now? I will write, I, I, will, I will write that in that page. I have to remembered as a guy who wanted to see smiles of billion people. Okay, friends. Now, it doesn't mean I have refused to uh, uh, answer question. You send a question to me. APJ um, at the rate of abdulkalam.com, 48 hours you will get reply, okay? Now you are wrong. As a token of our love and affection, I request Dr. our director, Professor M.S. Anand, to present Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam with a memento. for a very captivating and an enlightening speech. To quote your words, you, cannot, you have to dream before your dreams can come true. We did dream to have you here amidst us and to listen to your inspiring words. Today, that long cherished dream of ours has been fulfilled. We promise we will indeed work with integrity and succeed with integrity. As we reach, the end of today's lecture, 
May I now request Mr. Vishwanath of the Vivekananda Study Circle to deliver the word of thanks. Dear friends, on behalf of Vivekananda Study Circle, Extramural Lecture Team, Center for Innovation, and Inter-German Center for Sustainability, we wholeheartedly thank Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam for agreeing to come to IIT Madras and speak us on the topic creativity and youth power. Indeed, one cannot think a better name to speak on this important subject. And needless to say, it has been a once-in-a-lifetime experience for all of us. We are grateful to you, sir, for this thought-provoking lecture and for your valuable and inspiring thoughts on how the youth power can be channeled and manifested for national development. We shall always remember the pledge we are given to plant at least five trees and to uh, work and succeed with integrity and give it a priority to follow it. We also like, would like to thank the IIT Madras authorities, particularly the engineering unit, Dean Students Office, CCE, Security Section, and everyone who have been instrumental in organizing the lecture. Our thanks to the audience for making this afternoon a memorable one. Thank you, Vishwanath. I request you all to rise for the national anthem. Please sing along with us. Janagana Manadi Nayak Jayahe Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Punjabu Sindhe Gujarat Maratha Dravid Utkal Ganga Vinda Himachal Yamuna Ganga Uchal Jalad Taranga तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तब जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 